Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're back on our Daily Driven Boosted Fox build. Uh, last time we did our fuel system upgrade. Uh, we tore out the lower intake manifold. We fixed some leaks there. We got it back on the road. We got a tune. We actually made it back to work. Uh, it worked out pretty good. Now we did uh, end off with some tipping issues and stuff. We worked on those and it turned out on the ECU on this particular car, when uh, it's a percentage of the duty cycle of the injector, so a bigger injector, uh, it was squirting more fuel and the, the tippins were just completely pig rich. Uh, it was just pegging out the wide band. So we pulled those back later and that smoothed right out, it worked out great. Uh, we did discover a cold start issue later um, after that, the shooting of that last video. Cold starts were kind of lean, the exact opposite. We got that richened up a little bit and it's back on track, it's running great. So now we're gonna move on. Uh, we got parts coming in. We got this handy dandy Treadstone uh, intercooler that came in. Super nice piece. Now we're only running about 10 pounds of boost. So this is potentially a little bit of overkill, but you know, growth in the future, you know, I'm sure we're gonna turn things up. So we wanna get that in. We've been under the bumper here, mocking it up. And we've discovered that getting that two and a half inch piping through there is looking really tight. So we went ahead and grabbed one of these uh, Motion Raceworks lower radiator core bars. We're gonna cut the core out of there. It's damaged anyway, so I think it's a good move. This creates so much more clearance for the tubing to come around. Uh, we're not gonna go into super detail of installing this. We already did one of these in the 92 Fox. I'll link the video down below. You can go check it out. We covered all the details with measurements and how to line up the radiator and all that good stuff. So we're gonna kind of plow through that. It's a little bit ambitious on a daily driven car. You know, we get a, a day or two days off work and we're gonna cut the whole front end up, get this in, weld it back together and get this thing going. Now, depending on time, we might even try and mock up and install the uh, the intercooler as well. I don't know if we're gonna run in, you know, if we run out of time, we'll, we'll push that to uh, another phase, but that's where we're at. So yeah, let's dive into it. Oh, well, we're not off to a very good start here. Uh, I appear to have a seized up lug nut. I'm not sure what's going on. I'm trying to work it back and forth now and see, uh, see what's happening. Whew, snapped that right off. Oh, dang, that's hot. <laughs> well, five minute job just turned into a five hour job, probably. <laughs> Yikes. All right, well. All right, most everything's tore out of here now. There's a few miscellaneous things to still get. This power steering line needs to go because it goes right through the core there. The support bar is gonna have to go. Uh, you can see how tore up this old one is. It really needs to be replaced. And it's kind of bent up there. So we'll get those last few things done. We're gonna leave this hoop bar in here to kind of tie the two sides of the frame together. And then we're just gonna hit this with an angle grinder. That's how we did the 92. It worked really well. So we'll just hack that off with the angle grinder, smooth it out, and then uh, proceed to get the new uh, Motion Raceworks bar in there. Okay, here it is, 100% ready. Everything's out the way. Just simply cut it out now. Hey, yeah, I think, uh, about that. Oh, so close. <laughs> A couple of scragglers. Alright, there she is. Now we just gotta do some cleanup around here because we obviously didn't cut that up as high and as flush as we want. Didn't want to take off too much material, but now we we'll just clean up and uh, get the you know, get the ball welded in. It's almost five o'clock and you'd think we'd be a little further ahead, but here's where we're at. So obviously a slow start, the stud snapped off, yeesh, but we got through that. We got this uh, all cut up here. What takes a long time is getting all these little extra pinch welds and extra flaps of metal and there was pieces sticking down here, they're all over. Grinding and cleaning all that up takes a, quite some time, you know, just cutting it off, no big deal. All that grinding takes some work. Now this vehicle and many years ago was in a front end collision. We knew that and we we're hoping there wasn't any issues, but look at this, that end's hooked on, this end, <laughs> oh, let me get a better angle. Look at that, icy mama. So I uh, think I'm gonna have to get my, uh, my big boy pants on and muscle this and stretch it over here in a little bit. I still gotta do a little bit of cleanup work though before the, we can weld, get a flapper wheel and clean all this metal all around here everywhere. So then once that's done, we can start putting wheels on this thing. 
uh, get it off the jack stands. Then we're going to wheel it over into the metal building so we can get out of the wind for the chromoly welding. Uh, already five o'clock. <laughs> we really pushed it on this one, so oof, let's uh, let's get back to it. We got the bar in. We got the radiator in for a test mock-up. And as you may remember, on the '92, I ran into an issue where there, there was too much of a gap here, and I actually had to weld an extension onto the radiator. And I'm finding the exact same situations happening in this car. Even with um, this bar, you know, I ground out as much as I could here. It's all the way up flush. I figured on the 92, maybe I goofed up and left some here, but that does not appear to be the case. I got this thing all the way up and we have too much of a gap here. This needs to raise up in the air. So I'm going to go ahead and custom fab something here. So my own little perch to make that work. We're about at the end of the day. We're going to roll into day two, which is real sketchy because that's, you know, two day weekend. I have to hit the airport tonight. I'll be back in the morning. So pick back up on this and uh, <laughs> hopefully we can get that done. All right, I might have a solution for raising up the uh, radiator perches so that we can set the radiator a little bit higher. Here's what I got. A little bit of brainstorming. I measured the diameter of that lower radiator core bar and it was one and a quarter inches. So I'm gonna drill a one and a quarter inch hole here and then you know, cut out a square and then split it in half. So I just get half like that. So that'll essentially be like a half moon that can sit on the bar. And I'll place this on there, move it, a, you know, wherever I need exactly. And then, you know, I could cut up the edges and basically build a raised perch that will sit on the bar. I think that might work. Okay, so here's a basic concept. It'll sit right on there like that. And this little bracket is going to attach on top. And we'll basically build the perch. The bar is in. Let me show you where we're at. Got our perches made for the radiator. Any raised ones, see they're bumped up in the air. So now we won't have an issue with the radiator sitting too low. Doing pretty good, we're a little bit past lunchtime. Car's gotta be on the road tomorrow. Clean this up, get it painted, and get the coral back together. Not sure if we'll have time to fab up the uh, treadstone intercooler mounts, but we'll see how it goes. We still gotta fix that wheel too, because we had an un unexpected stud snap. Got all the wheel apart here. Obviously a five leg conversion. It's the style where the wheel bearing is integrated into this hub piece of the rotor. Absolutely do not like that. <laughs> it's such a pain. Anytime you're gonna do something like that, obviously you can see I got this broken wheel stud out, but you gotta break everything, get all this apart. What a pain. All of our foxes were like that actually. We um, switched the 90 uh, sunroof and the T-top Fox to 94, 95 spindles. Uh, so much better. I think this car is gonna be on the list for that down the line. You can see down here too, we got this bar painted. It's getting kind of ready to go back together. Just letting this paint dry, then we can drop our rubber pieces in. I got holes drilled in them so that they'll, you know, pop in properly and not slide and get lost. Did a little bit of um, paint matching, I guess. Red, uh, um, excuse me, black on the bar, and I did red on the frame. It's not a, you can, obviously it's faded in the engine bay, so it stands out a little, but, you know, it won't be bad. Not like black, you know, smearing up there. I think it'll look a lot better than that. Once everything goes back in, you won't really even see that. So, getting there. I think we're uh, on schedule and gonna make it for tomorrow. <laughs> Almost back together. Unfortunately, we ran out of time to get the Treadstone intercooler in here. Besides having to fab up the brackets, we also have to come up with a new plan for the cooler, bend up some new lines, or however we're going to do that. It's just going to be too much. The sun's about setting. We're about out of the day. This has to be back on the road tomorrow. So we're going to wrap this up, and we'll have to come back to that next time.
All right, it's all back together, ready to go to work. Got the radiator back in, sits in the original place, which is fantastic. We got the bottom tilted back a little bit, make some clearance for that new lower pulley that's gonna go in once we get the blower on there. Uh, of course, the bumper and everything's back in, but it's gonna have to come out. Unfortunately, it's probably gonna have to come out multiple more times. <laughs> Obviously, to install the intercooler and fab up all the uh, bracketry to hold it in place will be one phase. And then another time when the blower is actually in, we have to pull it all apart again so we can get the, the piping fabbed up and run and up to there. Uh, so yeah, that's just the life of a daily driven build. You know, you got to do little phases at a time. So, you know, next time maybe we'll get the UTI damper and that set up or we'll get the alternator relocated. It's just depending on how parts come in. We're playing the waiting game. So as parts are coming, we'll plan our next phases and get that done. So yeah, thanks for watching. Be kind to one another. See you next time.